Welcome to the Let Good Things In Show. I'm your host, Amanda Acker. I am so happy you're here. At the Let Good Things In Show, we talk all about second chances, resiliency, following your intuition, and even music. Listen to hear stories of hope and to be inspired. Remember, you are stronger than you think. Let's dive in. Hi, my amazing humans. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I am so excited to be bringing you my guest, Eliana Barrasco. Eliana is an intuitive, multi-dimensional coach, and she has worked in this field for the past five years. She helps people master their intuitive abilities by identifying and removing blocks in the body that hinder the ability to manifest the life they dream of. She will also be doing a short relaxing meditation at the end of our conversation today. Welcome to the show, Eliana. So grateful to have you here today. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. So could you tell us a little bit about your story and how you got to be where you are today? Absolutely. So my story really starts when I was a little girl. So I was very talented. I was very gifted, as all children are. But my talents were really about my imagination. I was very imaginative. And I was very lucky also because um, we were living in the countryside, me, my mom, and my, my grandma. And I had access to the woods nearby. We were very safe anyway. All, all children and all parents with their children would go there to the local playgrounds and the woods at weekends. Um, but I remember distinctively that I had so much fun in these woods because I was talking to all living beings. That's one thing that I always cherished about my life, even now. And um, I was talking to the trees, I was talking to the animals, I was talking to the owls, I was talking to the birds, I was talking to, uh, we saw a couple of bears once, obviously I didn't realize the danger, but you know, I was feeling very connected. I was talking to beings that other people couldn't see, but I knew they were there. So I was a very happy child, despite the fact that I was raised by a single mother because my father left when I was four years old. He was an alcoholic, so I literally good for nothing. So my mom had really hard work bringing me up on, on her own. But I was surrounded by a lot of love. And, um, and the world for me was, was enormous, was wonderful because I could see everything connected. And I felt so supported. Um, but um, the trouble is that neither my grandmother or my mother were very connected to their intuitive abilities. Um, you see, my grandmother was born um, before the turn of the century. So, and that goes back to the 1900. And um, she saw the war. And my mother was born in 1942, so she was a she was a war child. So they didn't really have time to develop any passions of their own. They just had to worry about bringing food to five children, work, and make sure that everyone was fed, everyone was properly dressed for the winter. And so between that and the fact that I was bullied by kids who just saw me as very different, you see, with kids... You don't really need to have a, a communication. You don't need to exchange opinions. Kids are very sensitive, even the bully ones. They're very sensitive. So if they sense that something is different from you, they easily push you away. So I grew up as a very introvert child. And I had no friends. And so my quest for the next 20 years was just really to try and be accepted, try and conform. I didn't want to be left behind. And, um, and so what I did, despite all my better judgment, despite the guidance from my heart, was to really say goodbye to my intuition, say goodbye to my abilities, and just embrace any groups that will take me. And so... You know, it's not that bleak because I had a wonderful career in the city of London. So I worked for many years in this um, 
corporation that supplies services to the financial centre in the city of London. And I had a wonderful job there, made good money. So, I, But I did exactly what everybody expected me to do. So I ticked all the boxes. And then I had all these friends who, like me, were going around in circles, didn't know what their life's purpose was, didn't know what their true passion was. And so they kept on wasting time. They kept on drinking their life away. They kept on parting their lives away. Um, they kept on sleeping around. So I just joined in. See, my, my only purpose was to be accepted, to be wanted, to feel part of a group. And um, so it was, um, it seemed like the perfect life on the outside. Had you asked anyone else, they would have, they would have said, Eliana has a wonderful life. I envy that life, right? But I knew that something was missing. And um, but I didn't know what it was. When I was looking at the work colleagues, even though I didn't adore my job, but I, I liked it, even though it wasn't my passion, but I observed my work colleagues and I could see that eventually they will change their jobs, they will get different positions or they'll go and work for a different company. They'll end their relationship with that guy or that lady. They'll meet someone else. They'll get married. They'll have children. They move to a new house. And I wasn't doing any of it. The persistent thought was that I was living the same life. Nothing was changing in my life. Nothing was moving ahead. Nothing was progressing beyond what I was doing. And um, eventually this seemingly good life ended. It ended in December 2012 when I was taken ill. I, my right arm started swelling up. I couldn't move it. I lost the use of my right arm. Went to see the doctor who sent me to a specialist. And I was diagnosed with a DVT under my collarbone, which is a very rare condition. So it's a blockage of the vein under the collarbone. And it's caused by a compression of the collarbone with the first rib. Many people don't even know anything about it. Normally they see a DVT in the arms or legs or hear about it, but never, never such a thing. So... <clears throat> I was lucky at the time because I was still working for my company and they gave me they gave me almost four months off work because I lost the use of my right arm. And also to do all the tests and the analysis that I needed to do. But I was lucky because they were offering private medical insurance, which um, allowed me to see many specialists here in Harley Street. So I had all the best of tests that anyone could have could have had. But bottom line. Nobody could tell me what had happened, what had caused it. So my life just came crashing down completely. I couldn't make sense of it. One minute I live life in the fast lane and one minute everything stops. And I was thinking and I was overthinking and, you know, I was off. I was signed off work. So I had so much more time to think. And for the previous 20 years, all I wanted to do was not to think, just to conform, just to do what others expected me to do, right? So all of a sudden, I'm faced with my own feelings. And all that came up was just sadness, loneliness. All of my friends, well, what I thought were good friends, they all disappeared because I was away from the party scene. I was away from the sports scene because I was doing also a lot of sport. They all disappeared. So one could easily say, well, they weren't really friends, but, but to me, they were the only friends that I had, what, what I thought were good friends. And so, you know, I just easily slid in depression. And um, I spent days and nights crying. I could hardly ever sleep not knowing what to do. And then um, I kept on seeing the specialist. And then eventually one of them said, look, you're just going to have to live with this condition. So he gave me a life sentence. And, and that's when I 
started contemplating about taking my life because I thought, what is the point? I can't live the life that I had. Um, there's absolutely no point for me to be here. And um, I just thought, you know, my mum will get over it. My friends will get over it. They will easily get on with their lives, which was silly, right? Because I was an only child. So my mother is very sensitive, as I am. My mother adores me. So she probably would have ended her own life shortly after. But, you know, without realizing how things were evolving, my gifts had come back because when I was a little girl, one gift that I had that I still remember vividly practicing was actually seeing the future. I remember my one of my um, earliest memories is from, be, from me being four years old. And I don't know I was four because um, my dad was still with us. So it was before my mom divorced my dad. So we were still living all together. And me being in the balcony of the house, looking, looking over at the sky, at the horizon. And what I saw was myself as an adult living in a foreign country. Wow. Yeah. So I had this gift of vision, right, of, of really... Because I'd always, I remember as a child, I always looked up at the sky thinking, gosh, I wonder what life is like outside of Italy. Because I was born and raised in Italy. I want to live in a foreign country. And here I am. You know, fast forward to 20 years, here I am. But when my illness took over my body, when I got into this severe state of depression, and um, I started contemplating on about with the idea of playing around with the idea of suicide. I actually saw the day of my funeral. I saw my mom in the car with some friends or relatives or somebody else, and them asking her, "How did you find out? Who called you? What happened when you travelled to England? Who did you meet?" Did they tell you what happened? Did you have any idea that she was so badly depressed that she was wanted to take her life? And so I know that my emotional state of being was bringing that event about. And I knew that it was now or never. But at that point, I didn't care. You know, at that point, I didn't care about what other people thought. When you are in that deep state of depression, all you care is about ending the pain. It doesn't matter how, you just want it to be gone, all right? Because also, the other thing that my, my doctor told me, and that crushed me completely, was that he had received the reports from the specialist who basically gave me this life sentence and basically was dropped in the papers for me to get permanent disability. So you can get all the help and support from social services and you know, to help you out with things to clean your house or do your grocery shopping, et cetera, et cetera. So that completely crushed my spirit. And so for me, it was, um, it was a point of no return. I felt like I was, um, it was in a gorge looking up and not knowing how to get myself out of it. So I was in total darkness and total despair. And, um, and I was waking up in the morning when, when I was getting a few hours of sleep. The first thing I'll do as soon as I open my eyes was cry. So there's nothing like that sense of deep loneliness within you. Um, and it, everyone's different. But of course, I... You know, I didn't know what to do. And then um, one evening, I'm just flicking through the Netflix programs on my computer, as you would, because, again, I was trying to, you know, watch things like this just to keep my mind busy so I wouldn't cry, you know, in between, in between the hours. And, um, and I see this movie with this Demi Moore movie, G.I. Jane. I know some people will probably think, oh, my goodness. <laughs> How corny does it have to get? 
<laughs> cheesy, right? Um, but I really like the fact that throughout the movie, there is this lovely poem by D.H. Lawrence that gets narrated. And um, I don't remember the title, but it goes like, um, I think I'm, par I'm paraphrasing it now, but um, the, 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 the first sentence is, I never saw a wild thing feel sorry for itself. I never saw a wild thing feel sorry for itself. And then there was a scene in the movie where they're all by the beach undertaking this grueling training, you know, the G.I. Jane and all the other guys training to become Navy SEALs. And this master chief is saying to the, to the lady, do you know what the best part of feeling pain is? Deep pain. And she says, no, I have no idea. And he said, pain lets you know that you are alive. And to me, I, I actually, I don't remember watching the rest of the movie. I had to watch it the night, the night, the night after because I just paused it and I just stopped and listened. So for me, the, the emphasis wasn't on dying because, you know, the movies are conversation about surviving and any forms of torture, any forms of any fights, et cetera, et cetera, you know. To me, the emphasis was on life, the gift of life, and the gift of living every moment and keep moving forward, which is something I hadn't done for 20 years. So I was relearning. I was, for the very first time in my life, I was learning to re-embrace myself as a baby, as a little girl, and walk the path. So I remember I switched off Netflix. I just went on Google and I started doing some research. And I came across this um, therapists, Russians and Germans, who were practicing clairvoyance. And allegedly many patients had gone to see them and they treated various illnesses, various other problems in their lives. So I kept on researching on them and then I found out that the following weekend they were having a course in London so I said wow what a coincidence at that time, exactly right so at that time I didn't believe in synchronicities I didn't even know what synchronicities were so for me it was a plain pure coincidence so I thought you know what I might as well spend the money you know I'm running out of ideas I might as well just try something else. So I did. I signed up, spoke to this gentleman on the phone. I booked myself. I was the only person that went there with a problem, with, with a physical ailment. Everyone else was a therapist, whether they were doing kinesiology or acupuncture or some form of or, or beta healing or various other healing modalities or other very, you know, very forms of different, different forms of therapies. So I spent two days in that room filled with so much information, so many techniques and so many methods to use on your body or just to, to it, it was really the law of attraction applied to you at its best. But I, it was all new to me. And um, they made it sound so easy. They kept saying, just see things with the eyes of a child. Just think like this is a playground right? Just believe it and it will come true. And I remember leaving the room on Sunday evening thinking, yeah, 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 what a load of tush, right? Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> come Monday morning, I was still signed off from work. So obviously it was, I was already in different spirits because these people had naturally lifted me up a little bit in so many ways. And um, Come to Monday morning, you know, obviously my arm was useless. And I thought, you know what? Come on, let's give it a go. Let's try some of the methods. Let's see what happens. 
So try the methods on myself. Nothing happened for 24 hours. 48 hours, nothing. Wednesday, still the same. So I thought, yeah, okay, never mind. Come to Thursday, I'm having breakfast. I take the dishes, I put them in the sink, I do the washing up, go to the bathroom, have a shower, come back, get dressed, and come back to the living room. And here I am thinking, hold on a minute, how did I do all this with both hands? Ah, oh, yeah. Exactly. So I, I looked up in my right arm and I could tell that I had some mobility regained. Not much, but it was moving, right? So I, I still wasn't convinced because I'm, I'm really, you know, I, I, I so I need proof. I need proof. Of so I went on trying them. Obviously, now I was more determined. I was more motivated. So I just keep on going. So I tried the methods Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And come to the next week, my swelling had gone down. And I was even able to do food shopping for myself. Obviously not carry loads, but I was able to carry the bags. And I kept on switching from left to right because I wanted to gauge the strength of my right arm. But it was there. So I thought, oh, my goodness. What's happening? Something is really something. There is something there. It's just that I, I've tapped into something amazing. So I called up the organizer of the course, who's a, who's a, who's a guy here who lives in London, who's now, uh, you know, who became later a mentor of mine and has been one of my friends, life friends ever since. And I told him about it and he said, well, welcome back to the invisible world. Welcome back to the world of the unknown. And, um, you know, and he, and he did say, what did we tell you about going into this with the eyes and the mind of a child? You just weren't listening. So I started training with him. I started training with him about um, two months later. In the meantime, my arm got gradually better and better. Because in the meantime, I went to do some physiotherapy. And I said, I really want to know. I still didn't know what the cause of this was, by the way. And then uh, I went to see the physiotherapist again with my private medical insurance. And the physiotherapist looked at me. And, uh, and I went in saying, you know, I'm going to come out of this room. And she's going to tell me exactly what is going on. So she looks at me. She said, oh, you know what? Your right hip has got this posture and it shouldn't. Your um." Your shoulder on one side is kind of a little bit, you know, kind of tilting to the left too much rather than being upright. And then your hip is smaller on the right side than the left side. So she starts giving me a few exercises and she wants to see me two weeks later. While she's there writing her report and her findings and the exercises that she recommended to me, she says out loud, I think we found the cause of your DVT. It was all body misalignment. And it makes perfect sense because over the years, I had taken my body for granted so much. I'd neglected my body that my body now was showing me exactly what was happening. Right? So when she uttered those words, I thought, oh my God. So now I know I have tapped into a field that was able to tell me exactly what I was looking for and how to correct things as well. So for me, it, was, um, it wasn't just a wow moment. For me, it was, it was discovering Eliana at the age of one, two, three, and four, and five, and six, until the age of eight, which is really when you know, I said goodbye to my passion, to my real self. And, um, and saying, hello, welcome back. It was embracing my inner child. And, um, and I've never looked back. So that was my journey back to light, out of the darkness. And, um, and it's never been a dull day. And um, so with hindsight, I know that from an energy perspective, 
years prior to developing the illness, the fact that I kept seeing people moving forward with their life and my life basically never never changing is what caused this DVD. Because from a, an energy perspective, the blood moves the energy around the body, right? And moves the energy of life, of transformation, of change. Now, if you put in yourself an idea that nothing is changing, nothing is moving, the body is going to reflect exactly what you think and exactly how you feel it. So with hindsight, I knew that I brought it about myself. And as I brought it about, I had the power to change it. And then obviously from there, I also adjusted my diet because you, you can't just do energy work on yourself. You have to nourish your body with, with healthy food, with, with fluids, with healthy reading. You ha also have to be careful about what you feed yourself in terms of television programs or movies. So it's a constant nourishing your mind and your body. So it's it's not just a one step. It's it's a it's a multiple step journey. But it's been uh, one that is revealing, and and I will cherish it forever. So, you know, meeting these wonderful people was um, was a life saving experience for me, and um, and the road to enlightenment. And then obviously I met so many other healers and so many other therapists who, who later encouraged me to um, basically specialize in this field and uh, become a teacher and a mentor myself and coach people to believe in themselves and, and generate the love from, from their heart throughout their body and, and just remove the blocks and, and just move forward. That's a very powerful story. Like I was, <laughs> I kept wanting to interrupt you. Like I got goosebumps. <laughs> well, believe me, when I, when I was just um, telling you about GI Jane and, and what the master chief said to this GI, I, I, I just got goosebumps myself because I, I relived that moment when I listened to that sentence in the movie and I thought, oh my God, here we go again. It still holds that power on me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. You know, I like how you um you brought up the movie because and how when you're talking about nourishing yourself and not just doing the energy work, like I'm a huge TV person. So that's like that speaks a lot to me because for me, I like to watch a lot of like drama and action and I'm a very intuitive, highly sensitive person as well. So I have nightmares like all the time. And as you said that, I was like, oh, that probably explains it, Amanda. <laughs> Shouldn't be watching those kinds of things all the time. Um, but yeah, I really, your story is so powerful. You know, like when you were talking about when you were a child and how you were super imaginative, you know, I related to that as well because when you were talking about being out in the woods and talking to nature, like I, I didn't have woods when I grew up, but I played outside all the time and just like had imaginary friends, you know, and just hung out with myself and I didn't have friends, you know, real friends either for the majority of my childhood. So I relied on myself. And now like when I look back too, it's like, oh, that's like, that was my intuition. That was me tapping into um, who I am as a person. And, you know, as you went on with your story and how you said, you know, you kind of like said goodbye to that person and went on to live this life where you were searching for that acceptance. And I've, that was my whole life. I was like, wow, like <laughs> you're speaking directly to me, you know, because that's all I ever wanted was to be loved and accepted. And, we tend to um, put ourselves last when we should be putting ourselves first. We need to be able to trust ourselves because who knows if me and you would have trusted ourselves at a young age and stayed true to ourselves, we may not have experienced those things that we've experienced. But at the same time, it's like a double-edged sword. It's like, well, if I wouldn't have done that, then I wouldn't have the experiences to be able to to give these gifts to the world now that I'm able to give because yeah, you know, I like to say our past don't define us, but at the same time, our past is who, what makes us who we are. 
you know, so it's all that learning experience and being able to teach others how to tap into their values and their intuition and what they want out of life. I really enjoyed hearing your story. That was remarkable. So many goosebumps. <laughs> so, many. so much. I mean, I, I still get goosebumps every, every time I, I, I tell um, my friends or, or anyone that asks me how I embarked on this journey of, of working as a, as a coach. Um, you know, and it, it's um, it, the experience that I have is 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 great because um, as you said, had I not had this experience, I wouldn't be able probably to work with people who suffer from anxiety or depression, or suffer from you know um, isolation, loneliness, self esteem. You know, we we have all sorts of different flavors of um, of fear because it's it's all fear based programming it's all fear-based emotions and feelings but um but they have multiple you know multiple flavors and and that's why we are multi-dimensionals um we operate on so many levels outside of our physical world where we eat drink walk and run um the spiritual and the mental planes where we operate they are just you know endless we create endless opportunities and endless possibilities and uh, and and for everyone and and for me it, it's really important um to the message i want to give to everyone is you know our experiences are unique they're authentic they're so important because um if there's one thing i've learned working as a multidimensional healer is that what we feel and think it goes out automatically to the outer world we might not see it, okay? Some people can. I know some people can, but it's there. So you're walking past someone in the street, and you had a wonderful day, right? And then all of a sudden you come home and you think, why on earth I'm feeling like this? I'm feeling <laughs> awful, and I had a great day, you know? I went out, I met friends, I got praised by the people I work with. Um, I have no bills to pay. So what is going on? But this is how we operate. We operate on, on different levels of existence and we influence each other. Even without the verbal communication, we constantly exchange information into each other's electromagnetic fields. So we are electromagnetic beings. So most of the communication happens without words. And it's picked up at the subconscious level. So what I say to people, especially people that have suffered from trauma and deep pain, never ignore the power that you hold. Because those feelings are important. Okay? Those feelings are unique to, up to each one of us. They're authentic because they relate to our own unique, powerful experience of our own lives. That nobody else had you know each one of us could write a book every month right yeah <laughs> for sure yeah. everybody <laughs> so true when i when i speak to some of my clients or some of my friends and i just ask them questions so tell me a little bit more about your life or tell me a little bit more about this time period they just become a source of just stories and stories and stories so i thought would you look at that Listen to that wonderful story. How beautiful is that? So, you know, as someone who's actually suffered from deep depression, um, there's always a way out. Even though when I thought I was alone, knowing what I know now about the invisible world and the other dimensions, we are never alone. We are never alone. All we need to do is just reach out and say, give me what I need. Tell me what I need to know to get out of the state, to move forward in my life. That's all we need to do. Yeah, that's so powerful. You know, when we think about um, the energies, so many people will say, Oh, Amanda, like when you're around, like, it's just like you lift up the room and I'm like, what? 
you know, and now that I know more about energy and being around the people that I choose to surround myself with now, it's like, that is so powerful. And you're so right. Like I'll have days where I'm like, oh, I'm so happy. I'm so excited and everything's going good. And then you can be just by a stranger and all of a sudden you feel, you can literally feel their emotion and take it on as your own. And that is so remarkable to me and it's like wow like <laughs> we have way more power than we think we do for real like we truly do all of us every single person in the world so much power through our energy and how we are throughout life around other people like it's and we like you said we all have amazing stories and I know for sure I could write a book every <laughs> about every single month of my life <laughs> Oh yeah, and it would be a good one too. Oh, yeah, I mean, when I when I was a kid, I used to have a diary. So every day I was writing in my diary, and actually, my mom kept those diaries. And so, yeah, I know. I went rereading those diaries about three years ago, and obviously, you know, <laughs> I had a good laugh, or we had a good laugh. There was so much stuff in there that obviously I thought, whoa, how is it possible? I can't remember any of it. Some some of the things I did remember, but the, the sort of introspective look that I had at the time and I thought, wow, is that me? You know? <laughs> yeah. Noting things down about people. And, and you know, children are very observant. Yes. <laughs> you know? They're very they're, their memory is so sharp and, and their senses are so sharp. But it's it's unbelievable just uh, with those. I think with those journals, I could have written about 10 book, books, really. <laughs> right. Um, so much of it. Um, but, yeah, so, um, you know, it's um, it, it's really interesting because um, energy is really important. And um, once you realize that you can actually activate the energy from within yourself to move the information around your body, and make changes within your body, then everything around you starts changing as well. It's it's like magic. It's a power that we have never been encouraged to use as a as a world collective. I mean. Right. Because in, in some countries it's frowned upon, in some cultures it's really frowned upon, and uh, and more people now are opening up to to the fact that we have these hidden abilities. You know. People call it the sixth sense. I really call it humanity's inner power. That's our real inner power. And um, and the more we go on exploring, the more we find out, you know, new things, new beautiful things to explore and, and to manifest. So I know my clients, you know, talk to me about the experiences before meeting me and um, how their lives have changed after working with me and um you know and I'm after years of doing this I'm still amazed I'm still like um that four-year-old girl never ceasing to be amazed at changing people's lives you know just with the power of imagination it's very powerful so, imagination can take yeah. you all over the place and you know and in, in our thoughts um you know, I follow this uh, man, his name's Mike Dooley, and he does the notes from the universe. And he always says, thoughts become things. And the first time was years ago, and I found him, and I was like, no, they don't. And I thought about it, I was like, wait, yes, they do. Because <laughs> everything that's happened in my life was, it started as a thought. I thought it, and whether it was bad or good or indifferent, it happened, you know, because I thought it, and I believed it to be true, and so it was. Um, so yeah, that's so powerful. I could talk to you literally about this stuff for hours, but, um, can you, how long is your program? (laughs) (laughs) Not that long. Um, so, um, just to, um, I hate to end this conversation, but could you tell us, um, your number one tip for everyone listening to be able to let the good things into their lives? The number one thing is not to follow your heart, but to listen to your heart. And I'm, I'm going to show you in a minute how to do it in a very short but very powerful meditation. When you think you're alone, when you think no one is there to listen to you, when you feel hopeless, 
go back to the heart, connect with a heart center, with a heart energy, which is the most powerful energy in the universe, and just listen. Because that energy is the energy of your guides, of your spirit guides, is the energy of your family, is the energy of your ancestors, is the energy of the human collective. Just listen. Sit down, no pressure, or lie down, and just listen and see what comes up. See what thoughts come up, what ideas come up. Have a conversation with the heart. Your heart will never lie to you. Your heart will always be there for you. And your heart will always support you. Our life is amazing, but our lives are so more powerful if we live them from the heart, which many people who suffer do because they're very sensitive. Otherwise, they wouldn't suffer. But listening to the heart can bring up so much energy and so much support. Yeah, that's beautiful. I that, I love that. But yes, um, you can um, go ahead into um, your meditation that you have for us. Okay. So just um, sit down or lie down, whichever it's easier. And close your eyes if it feels right to do so, or just rest your gaze somewhere that it feels comfortable. Just take a deep breath in through your nostrils and out through your mouth. And again, in through the nostrils. And out through the mouth. And just gradually see if you can make your in-breaths and your out-breaths a little bit longer. Like three seconds in and three seconds out. Four seconds in. And four seconds out. Five seconds in. And five seconds out. And see if you can feel calmer now. A little bit more relaxed. Now place your hand in the center of your chest where your heart energy center is. And just connect with the heart. Feel the beating of the heart. And now imagine you see a sparkle of light from the center of the heart. Going through the chambers of the heart. Filling the rest of your chest. Just watch as the light gets brighter and brighter. Filling every tissue, every cell. 
every organ within the chest area of the body. And just keep on breathing. And watch the light. Watch it as it brings clarity, focus, renewed energy. Watch the light move through the neck, through the head, all the way to the crown of the head. Move down to the torso. Down through your legs. All the way to your toes. Lighten up your shoulders, your arms your fingertips. Regenerating and rejuvenating every single cell, every single organ, every single tissue in the body. Watch as the light gets brighter and brighter. And its intensity gets stronger and stronger. Feel the happiness that it brings. Feel the love and the joy from source. See yourself as a body of light, the body of love. the body of happiness. The body of joy. And I'm just going to finish with a very short Oponopono. Look at yourself, look at your body, look at your spirit and your beautiful soul and say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I love you. Thank you. And from me, on behalf of humanity, from source, to you, whoever you are, wherever you are, carrying the heavy burden and the pain, we say to you, I'm sorry. 
Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Namaste. Wow. That was amazing. Honestly, that was my very first time um, listening to a meditation. And it was amazing. So thank you so much, Eliana, for sharing that and your story and all the gifts that you brought to us today. Thank you so, so much. I feel very humbled uh, to have been here and have shared this with you. I feel so happy. And, um, and I hope that everyone will be as touched as I have been by being with you on this wonderful show. And thank you so much for being here, Eliana. And just as a reminder to everybody listening, remember, you are stronger than you think, and you can have the life you imagine, regardless of your past. Make sure to hit that subscribe or follow button so you don't miss an episode of the show, and I will talk to you all soon.